This is the Roborock Curve 2 Flows, Roborock's answer to the rolling mops that you're seeing now from brands like Eureka, Mova, Dreamy, and others. And it is a variation of what we see here from the existing Roborock Curve X. When you look at them side by side, it will be hard to tell the difference until you actually look at the robot vacuum. Because when you look at the flow, you notice that the robot vacuum is considerably larger than what we're getting with the Curve X. Now, let me explain what makes the Roborock Curve 2 flow special. For one, even though it comes with 20,000 Pascal of suction, which is less suction, about 10,000, 8,000 Pascal suction less than what we're getting from the Dreamy Aqua 10, as well as the Mova Z60, the overall vacuum performance here, in my opinion, is as good, if not better. And that's because the algorithm, the pathing algorithm that the Roborock uses to go around the corners and in orderly rows, as well as to figure out how close things are, is probably best in class right now. That means their vacuuming performance is already very good just based on how this robo vacuum moves and doesn't get stuck. What I did find very interesting is that the roller shield on the Roborock Curve 2 Flow does not fully cover the brush. And if you look at the Mova Z60, their roller shield does fully cover. So one is going to be slightly more protective than the other, just with the coverage, in my opinion. So we're going to run this vacuum test on our Roborock Curve 2 Flow. And I got coffee beans, I got some crushed graham crackers that I am going to crush here. We also got some lentils and I got some cat hair and debris. So we're going to make this floor really messy and see if it can handle it because I already know that the Mova Z60 can handle it and the Curve X can handle it, but does the Curve 2 Flow handle it better? And that's a pretty large mess we have here. We're going to spread it around and send our Curve 2 Flow to vacuum all that up. The Curve 2 Flow makes quick work on a picking of particles of different sizes, especially on hard floors. And that's because this dual divide brush, which is not too big, is also very good at picking up larger particles because there's more space around the brush. So these are things that you might not notice until you start reviewing a lot of them. But I noticed that it did a better job picking up the larger particles, like you have the coffee beans and the graham crackers, at least on the first pass, than what we saw from units like the Mova and the Dreamy. And because they're rarely ever going to be at their peak suction power because of the overall effect on battery life, even if it has 20,000 Pascal of suction, you're always going to be somewhere between maybe 5, 8,000 Pascal in general use. So here, it does a great job picking everything up. It doesn't miss any areas. And because of those dual side brushes, it does a good job just feeding itself, but it doesn't get as close to the corners as I wish it could, because here are the edges. And in terms of the corners, well, physics rules here, because no matter how much that rectangle wants to go into that sharp corner, it can't. So on that corner, it can't get into the corner itself. However, on edges like you see here that are curved or even straight edges, it does do a great job getting closer to them about 10 millimeters away. Next, let's do an oatmeal test. We're going to get some rolled oats, some oat milk, and spill it on our floors and see if we can pick it up. I'm going to do a royal test here. This is the cup of oatmeal after two hours. So we're going to let our robot vacuum try to clean this up. There's a lot of liquid here, and this is what the drawback of the spinning mop pads are, is that they can't pick up water off the floor. And we're letting the milk dry. It's been about 40 minutes and you can see how dry it is already. For the Curve 2 Flow, you want to make sure to either turn on or off the deep cleaning for heavy dirt or stains. So if you have big stains with large particles that are wet stains, you don't want that on because it's automatically going to want to vacuum that stain and then wash it. If you have a lot of wet stains with debris, as you see here, the secret is just to put it in a mop only mode. So here I have it on floor wash and it is mopping up all of that dried oatmeal and is behaving just like a wet dry vacuum does. And it's because there comes a feature called dirt tech. 
And that's powered by the AI dirt recognition system inside of the robot vacuum itself. So when it detects heavy dust, it boosts its suction power. And when it detects spills or wet stains, it switches to mop only. So you don't necessarily have to put it in a mop only mode. It will automatically do it itself and it will turn off its side brush and its main brush and pick it up. So it's not going to get cross contaminated. The only thing is that if your mess, your liquid mess has solids in it, it might think that it has to also vacuum it. So it's a work in progress in my opinion. And this is the biggest benefit of the updated scraper tool over the MOVA and the Dreamy is that it can deal with larger particles better and that's because it can pick it up there's more space for them and it's not going to clog up the roller and amazingly the entire oatmeal stain is gone and that is a very good performance ultimately the test is that this is where the oatmeal was and the oatmeal is all gone so it's inside of this robo rock including all of the milk it does take about three minutes for your robo rock curve to flow to wash its mop heads and get ready. So don't think that you just press the button and it's gonna go out and mop. It does take some time. One thing about your Curve 2 Flow is that it does not come with a just a mop only mode. It has vac and mop, it has vac followed by mop and vacuum, but it doesn't just have mop. So we got some syrup here and we're gonna do a quick run and see if it can pick all of this syrup off of the floor like a traditional wet dry mop would. In this test, we're using enough syrup that it would mirror what you would have dropped if you were making ice cream or dropping sundaes on the floor in your house. And this syrup test after two hours of letting it dry is a real good showcase of just why these roller mops are better. Because not only is it picking up the syrup, but it's picking up the sugar. It is using the water and refreshing the water so it's, there's no commingling. And the water is not being moved to the other side of the floor. That's another big thing because traditionally what would happen, it would just be picking up some syrup, but it would still be on the roller because the water is all the same. And then it would just move that sugar and syrup to somewhere else. Here, the floor is not going to be as sticky. And you can see the area where that dried syrup was. And because the roller mop flows in one direction like a wet dry vacuum and it provides more pressure to your floor the caked on sugar stains are getting removed and if you walk on top of it you won't have that sticky sticky feeling or sensation even though there was just syrup right here so after cleaning up all that syrup and running one self-clean session you can hear how loud that auto heated drying is. But I wanna know how clean the mop heads are. And I also wanna see how dirty the dirty water tank is. And before you ever, ever, ever pick it up and flip it around, because you have that dirty water tank, you need to check that first. So we're, dirty water tank removed. And so we are going to go clean this up and you can see where that dirty water is and how it is put inside of the tank. So there's going to be water in here. There's also going to be water flowing in here through the pump and any debris that was picked up is going to be located inside of this bin. You can see even though it tried to pump out as much solution as possible, there's still going to be some remaining. So that's why they always tell you to clean the dirty water tank after almost every mopping run if you're going to pick them up. And the secret to getting the most out of a roller mop like the Roborock Curve 2 Flow is going to be to use more water for the mopping run. So don't put this on low, don't put it on the lowest setting for water because then it's not going to clean anything. It needs fresh water for this to clean because as the water is getting delivered, then it's going into the dirty water tank. So if you want more cleaning capabilities, make sure to increase the water level for mopping. Let's say you wanted to clean this up on its own, you would lift up your propulsion system and this plastic piece right here Dirty water channel would be removable. And once you get that out, that will be the actual scraper tool and that's what's fitting along this channel here. Let's talk about the app experience for your Roborock Curve 2 Flow because more so than ever, the app experience as well as the software is going to be as important now as the hardware because a lot of these models are going to have similar hardware. 
So when we go inside the Curve 2 Flow inside of the app, it generates a map that is pretty standard now when you're using the Roborock navigation systems. It's very precise and it uses LiDAR and everything, even if it's not going to be showcasing furniture, it knows basically where everything is. But once you go inside of the settings, you can start modifying things, but let me share with you a secret. Inside of the history, I use mine for 961 minutes, and I did it 22 times in every single mode. But what I learned is that this is going to be on a quick setting, and you can see it doesn't really do the borders, and it does a quick job, and it doesn't have many obstacles, not as much as we see on units like the MOVA Z60 and others. But watch this. Once I go into this, this is going to be a 2x deep cleaning cycle and i have never seen a robot vacuum that is this comprehensive that gets as close to everything and you can see the lines look it like double crosses triple crosses and it does a great job and this is on a deep cleaning cycle it gives you a complete log about how it did it and you can also set it inside of the settings so that inside of floor cleaning settings you have automatic remopping you have the pet area deep cleaning and if you go inside the app, you have full room, zones, routine. All of this is relatively standard. I don't see a big difference in the app experience between the Curve 2 Flow and the Q Revo Curve X or other Roborocks. So what I like to do is just create my own routine or I like to do a customized setting so that I can decide which room is going to do what so that you can set that so maybe your kitchen is going to be mopped and your living room is just going to be vacuumed. And if you're comparing the app experience to the MOVA Z60, you can go in the MOVA app. It's just like the Dreamy app where you have almost the same identical map because they both use LiDAR. I would say that the MOVA is doing a slightly better job in recognizing which room is what because the object recognition is going to be better. And the big thing is that the MOVA will do a better job marking where everything is, wherever it sees obstacles. So here it saw some cords. You know, this is going to be an obstacle. Here it recognized a base, base of a light, which is true. You know, another base here. So it does, you can notice furniture, it noticed a pet, and it gives you a probability of that. It noticed cleaning tools as well. So you notice that the MOVA does a better job just marking where everything is but it doesn't necessarily translate to doing a better job cleaning because the level of detail that you get on something like your curve to flow is so big i mean look at it hits everywhere it gets close as close to everywhere as possible and it doesn't get stuck because i used it 22 times and i have not had a failed session even in a test session so this is a very impressive overall robot vacuum. Finally, because your unit now is using a rolling mop pad, they have changed the design of the cleaning tray here. Mm -hmm. So Roborock took their learnings from their wet dry vacuums and said, hey, how can I get my water flow on this roller mop pad to just flow in one direction? Because the performance is much better. So they re-engineer this part so that the water on your roller mop pad is gonna flow, clean it, and then flow out so that there's no commingling or letting that dirty water stay on that mop pad longer than it needs to. And when you take a closer look at the underbody of your Roborock Curve 2 Flow, the, the features that I notice automatically is that it comes with that duo divide, the same duo divide we see on the Q Revo lineup. It also comes with this anti-tangle side brush but it comes with two of them. And one side is gonna be more open, which means this side is the side that's always gonna be going into the corners to try to get all the edges. If we're talking about the biggest weaknesses of the Roborock Curve 2 Flow, let me just list them out of the way for you. For one, it doesn't come with a auto soap dispenser. There's no way to use an auto soap dispenser here. So you have to add in the detergent inside of the clean tank. And that actually will go inside of and wash your rollers here so that it can use detergent that way. I think that's a missed opportunity. I wish it came with that because the Dreamies and the Movas do come with that auto soap detergent. Another missed opportunity here is that I understand why Roborock opted to not include that extendable side brush 
on the curve here, but I wish they did. Because if they had that, it can really get into all types of corners much better than what's offered here. Not saying that there's anything wrong with there's anti-tangle side brushes, but it just doesn't have the same reach as a extendable side brush. So that is another weakness on the Curve 2 Flow. If you put it all together, what makes the Curve 2 Flow so good is that they are combining what we already know from Roborock, their best-in-class pathing algorithm and their mapping technology and their easy app experience. And then they combine it with the roller mop, the thing that we've been asking for and something that Roborock didn't have until now. So this is really worth it. I think this is probably one of the best robot vacuums I've ever tried. Because what this shows is maturity inside of the robot vacuum industry. Because everyone's realizing that nobody's willing or the consumer are less willing to spend $1,500 on a robot vacuum. Because what can you get for a thousand now? What can you get for 500? What can you get for 300? So if you have a premium offering, it better be good. It better be value. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing a premium offering at a value price. It might not be coming with the best build quality. I mean, I'm just telling you as it is because there's a lot of plastics being used here, but the components are heavy duty. They've really mastered the manufacturing by the addition of their roller mop pads and not making a big deal about it. Just saying, okay, you guys wanted one. We added one so easily inside of our robot vacuum because we've mastered this right here. They've mastered this. They've mastered this. This is their Roborock F25. They have a F25 Ultra. They have a Pro Ultra. You know, they have a lot of features that they've innovated inside of these roller mop pads. They're not just creating them. They are innovating here. And they've taken a lot of the innovation you see here inside of their wet dry vacuums and they've added it into here because this is a wet dry vacuum. This is the thing that nobody is saying out loud, I feel. If you look between them, what's the difference? If you look between them, what is the difference between this and this? The roller mops are basically the same. There's not a big difference between them. So if you are able to produce a great wet dry vacuum and you're able to produce a great wet dry vacuum motor that's efficient and then you use that motor inside of your robot vacuums of course it's going to do a good job they've already tested this for years so with that thanks for watching everybody if you have any questions please leave them in the comment box below and please hit that like and subscribe button it really does help support our channel this is the roborock curve to flow i love mine and I think this is really the future where everybody's going. With that, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you next time. Bye, bye, bye.